Hi everybody, welcome to another video tutorial with me, Rally, and you're watching my channel, Rally the Brand. Today, I've got a very exciting video for you. I want to show you how to recreate the BattleNet UI using HTML and CSS in the browser. I understand that this video is not for everybody, but if you're aspiring front-end web developer, there is a lot to learn from recreating complex user interfaces just like the one we're doing today. As always, all the source files will be linked in the description below. And if you like videos just like this, please consider subscribing to my channel, smash the like button and comment below to let me know what you want to see next or if you have any questions. Now let's jump on the computer and get started. Welcome everybody, let's get started. So this is the original BattleNet UI, which we'll be coding today. And because this is a Windows application, it's hard to zoom in and measure some of the elements. So what I've done is I've taken a screenshot and I've pasted the screenshot in Photoshop so we can zoom in and out and move around and figure out how much spacing we need between elements, the height of elements and so on. So I'm going to close the real application now. And, and we'll just focus on the Photoshop file when we need it. First of all, let's quickly go through the project folder. And to start with, as usual, we have index.html, which contains our HTML file. Then we have images folder, which contains all the assets that we're going to need for this project. And then last but not least, we have the CSS. And for the CSS, I'm using SCSS. So as you can see here in the HTML, I've linked the style sheet, which is main.css. And the way it works, the SCSS is compiled to the main.css file, and this is how it works. Anyways, let's get started by building this project. So I'm going to close the Explorer. I'm going to switch watch SAS, and I'm just going to go live. So I don't have to refresh every time I make changes. As you can see, we have a blank page now. And let's start building some of the UI elements. Before we begin with this, I wanted to mention that I couldn't find exactly the same images here. But what I've done, I found a very similar one on the BattleNet website, which is here, uh, which is this one. And then I edited it slightly in Photoshop to make it look similar on the real application. And this is the result. It looks very similar. And I think that this will be perfect for the job. So let's close this and focus on the layout. First of all, we need to figure out how we're going to make the layout. We have a header, we have a sidebar, and we have a main section. Grid makes this very easy to do. We can basically make two columns. This is gonna be our first column, and this is gonna be our second column, and we can make two rows. Let me show you how this works. But before we do this, let's create some of the elements in our HTML. So first of all, because we'll be using grid, I think it would be nice to wrap everything in a div with a class of wrapper. So let's do that. And inside this wrapper is where we'll be adding all of our elements. The first one being he the header. So let's add header. And I'm just going to put a class name for this header. And then inside here, let's add something like, let's add some dummy text. So header like this and then let's do the sidebar now so for the sidebar we can do a side and the class name can be sidebar let's add some demo text as well the last element that we need to create is the main element where all the content is going to go so let's do main with the class of main and inside here we can do main content just like this. Let's save this, go back to the web page, and let's have a look. So we're getting all the elements, but obviously we need to start styling the page. Let's do that. Let's jump back, open the main.scss on another tab in here, and let's close the Explorer. I've obviously zoomed in quite a lot, so you can see a little bit better if you're mobile or a tablet. Let's start by styling our body tag. So let's open body, and inside here, what I want to do is reset the margin to zero. Then I want to set the font family to be Arial Helvetica, Helvetica Sans Serif. And I think this font fairly close to what the font on the original application is. I know it's not exactly the same, but I feel like it's going to do the job. Now let's add the background image. 
and the URL for this background image will be images and then s4 hero desktop bg1.jpg for me and we can do dot dot in here as well just like this and then I want to make sure that the background image covers the full width and height of the layout and to do this let's make sure we put the background size to cover which should cover the whole page let's have a look at what we get now as you can see the image is coming up now but on the original design the image is slightly moved to the right of the screen so let's do that super quickly i'm not going to be i'm not going to be super precise with the numbers but i'll do my best to just mimic the ui as much as possible so let's move the background image by doing background position and i'm just going to move the image 150 pixels from the left to the right and then I want to make sure that the image stays zero at the top. Let's save this and have a look. As you can see, the image has moved slightly to the right now, and I think this is perfect. Let's now focus on creating the actual layout. Let's go back. And for this, we created the wrapper div. So let's use that. And we need to convert this into a grid. So let's do display grid. And to do this grid is actually fairly simple. What we have to, what we can do is set grid template areas and the areas we can name whatever we like, but I'm just going to keep it simple. So first of all, I want the header, which is this bit of the website to take the full screen. And I know that we're going to have two columns underneath. So what I can do is put header header, which will which will take the full screen. I'll show you in a second. And then on the next on the next line, uh, we can put the sidebar, and then we can put the content on the right side, just like this. So to make this work, we actually need to do grid template columns. And first of all we need to find out the size of the of the column on the left side for the sidebar so let's quickly zoom in and just drag like this in photoshop this is 220 maybe minus the borders i'll say 218 something like this so let's do 218 pixels and then let's make sure that the rest this section here which we called main takes the rest of the screen and to do this we can use we can use the fraction measurement we can literally do one fraction of the screen save this now we need to do something similar for the rows so for the rows we need to do grid template template rows now we need to make sure that the row the top we can set the top row to be let's have a look quickly if we zoom in we'll know that the top row is roughly 80 pixels and we can set this to 80 pixels just like this and then for the second row which is this one here we wanted to take the rest of the available space on the screen to do this again we can do one fraction let's save this and at this point if we go back you will see that things are starting to work but obviously they're not in the correct place and if i inspect everything let's have a look i'm using by the way i am using firefox and with firefox you can actually click on the div that we displayed as grid and there is this grid icon on here on the right side i'll zoom in a little bit more so you can see just like this we can actually display the line numbers and the area names so if I click on the grid here, you'll see that we're getting some lines. And if I display the grid area, you'll see that we're getting the names as well, but they're all mixed up. So to fix this, by the way, first of all, the image is not taking the full screen. To do this, we might want to make the wrapper full screen in the first place. So let's do that. So for the wrapper, we can do height of 100 VH, which is, which is vertical height of the screen. Let's save this. And as you can see, the image is now fixed. You can kind of see that our grid is fixed still as, as well a little bit. You can see that the header is actually taking the full width. Um, I know it's saying sidebar for now. 
and then you can see that the sidebar is taking the 218 pixels and then the content is taking the rest of the available space. So let's now fix the positioning of the elements. To do this, we actually need to give each HTML element. So for example, the header, the sidebar and the main grid area name. Let me show you. So for example, for the header, we actually named the header grid template area to be called header, but you can call it whatever you like. So let's do grid area and the grid area obviously will be header now. Let's save this and let's copy this down here and paste it twice. And now let's copy and now we need to do this, the same thing for the sidebar and for the main. So for the sidebar, we can do sidebar and then for the sidebar, I decided to use the same grid name and we can just use a sidebar just like this. But as I said, you can't give them different names. Uh, they don't have to be the same as the class names in here. And for the, for the last element will be content. So let's copy and paste like this. Let's go back to the browser and have a look. As you can see now, the header is displaying correctly. We get the header uh, text. The sidebar is displaying correctly because we're getting the sidebar text. And the content, the main content is displaying correctly because we're getting the main text. And this is brilliant. Let me remove the, the display area names now because they just get in a way. Let's put this at the bottom as well. Maybe it would be slightly easier to see because we'll be focusing on the header to start with. Let's go back to the Photoshop and let's have a look. So for the header, we have a few elements. We have the logo with this little icon here. I don't know if you can see with this icon. Then we have the main navigation bar here. And then we have this username account section on the right side. Also, we need to think about how we can add some of the details like this line above. And some of them can be a little bit tricky. And of course, we're getting the blurry background, which is really cool, which we'll need to do and so on. So let's start building some of those things. First of all, we can do the blurry background and then we can do this line on top. Let's see how we can do that. Let's go back to the CSS. To do a blurry background is actually fairly easy. So I think it will work on most browsers, but I don't think that Firefox is working yet. Uh, but I'll show you the trick how to make it work on your browser so you can develop. To do this, we can do backdrop filter. And the backdrop filter is called blur. And then we need to set a number of how much we want to blur it. For now, I'm just going to give it a guess and go with 10 pixels. Let's save this, refresh. And as you can see, the background is quite blurry now. And if I was to inspect the header and move the number down, you will see that we can try to make the blurriness similar to the one in here. And this is fairly blurry. So let's have a look. So maybe six will be uh, good enough. Let's go with six. And if you want to know how to do the prefixes for other browsers, just in case uh, it doesn't work, for WebKit, we can do WebKit, backdrop, filter, and then we can just copy the value that we just done, like this. And for Mozilla Firefox, which we're using right now, we can do mouse, and then backdrop, dash filter, and then just paste the value. Now, some of you might experience that this backdrop filter does not work on Firefox. And let me quickly go to can I use. So basically, can I use will tell you whether you can use certain features in the browser. The one that we are looking for is the backdrop filter. And as you can see, the backdrop filter works on the majority of the browsers. But for example, for some reason, it's still not working on Firefox, but you can actually make it work. And uh, they give you some instructions in here. Basically, basically what you have to do is go to about config on your browser and enable the layout.css backdrop filter. Let me show you. So inside the browser, just like this, and uh, this will say, Proceed with caution, 
I ex you have to click yes, I accept the risks. And the filter that we need to look is layout.css dot, and let's have a look at what it was, dot backdrop, backdrop filter enabled. And if you set this to true, this will work. And if you set this to false, let's set it to false for a second and refresh, you'll see that it's no longer working. So this is something that you might have to look after. So let's enable this because I do want it to work in this browser. And let's go back, refresh, and we get the blurry background. Now, the second step that I wanted to do is try to figure out how I can create this little tilted line, which is pretty cool. So let's have a look at how we can recreate it. So let's go back. And what I'm thinking of doing is instead of adding another div element, I'm just going to create a pseudo element, which we can then use to display the line and give it a background color and so on. Let me show you. So for the header, let's do before. And inside here, we're going to have to do content. We're going to have to leave the content empty. So this creates kind of like a virtual difference. We're going to have to set this as absolute. But before we do this, we need to set the header to be relative. So let's do position relative for the header and let's do position absolute for this set of element then we need to give this a width and a height maybe so let's go back and have a look so the height of this will be roughly around eight pixels without the border so let's do height eight pixels and we can do a left, and I don't know how much from the left to do. Let's have a look. I kind of want to use percentages, so I'll probably just figure out by eye. Maybe maybe that will be around 10%. We'll have a look, maybe less, I think. So let's say left will be 10%, and let's set uh, right to be 10%, and let's set the top position of this to be equal to zero. First of all, we probably won't get anything just yet. And this is because we're going to have to add some, some sort of a background. So let's add a background dash color of something like, I don't know, something gray like this. Save it and have a look. As you can see, we're getting this line and maybe we need to do it less. So maybe like it needs to go to 6% or 8. Uh, let's have a look. We can do 6, 6 like this. And I think this will be almost close. Maybe we measure it later when we add the logo as well. Now to do those angles, it's a little bit tricky, but luckily we can use the transform perspective CSS property. And let me show you how we can do that. So let's do transform. And we need to change the perspective of this. And to do this, we can do perspective like this and then put a number. So for this, let's go with 200 pixels. And let's have a look at what happens before we continue. So nothing has happened yet. And this is because we actually need to rotate this as well. Let's have a look. So we can do rotate X. Rotate X. And then we can put the angle that we want to rotate it. And for this, I'm going to go with 20 degrees. And let's have a look. And as you can see, this has done the job and it's rotated the element and it's also given it a perspective. So if we select this pseudo element, which I created as before, and if I change this value of 200 pixels, let's have a look if you can see the difference. I don't know if you can see the difference. Maybe I need to like zoom in quite a lot. Oh. Let's have a look. Okay. Okay, I've zoomed in so much so you can see the difference now. So this is how the perspective of the box is changing, as you can see. And maybe we need to go, I don't know, I'm zoomed in quite a lot now, but maybe we can go 130. And then if we check out the degrees, this also gives it a little bit of an angle. So let's use this 20 and 130. Let's have a look at how it looks at full screen, actually. So I'm not actually convinced yet so maybe i don't think that this is changing much but maybe we can change the degrees so let's have a look 
I don't know, this looks similar to the design here. Yeah, I think this would do the job, so 216. So let's go 216. Obviously I can spend a little bit more time measuring all this, but I don't think that it has to be, but it doesn't have to be super perfect. So let's save this. And something that I forgot to mention is that those backdrop filters can actually be very heavy for performance. So just watch out when you add many of them. Let's save this. And now instead of having this gray background color, let's change the background color to something with opacity. So instead of gray, let's do RGBA. And we can do, let's have a look at this. Technically we could do white and just dim it down. Let's have a look at 255, 255, 255. And then we can dim it down to 0.3 opacity. Save this and let's have a look. I'm not convinced with this. I think the numbers will need to change. Maybe like 39, 39. This is a little bit better, I believe. Uh, so let's let's go with something like this, actually. So let's paste this, 139, 139, 139. The next bit that we need to add now, I'm not sure why it's doing this, um, semicolon. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly why it is doing this, but I'm pretty sure that this is fine. And now let's do the border. If we zoom in, you, you can see that there is a very slight border in here. It's one pixel and it's very like, is slightly lighter so let's have a look at how we can do that we need to add this border to the left bottom and right to do this we can do border left and the border that i want to add is going to be one pixel solid rgba let's go with white so 255 255 255 we can add a little bit of space between them just like this and let's put 0.4 of opacity save this and this is the left side so let's duplicate this two more times so for the right i need to be the same one pixels and for the bottom we need one as well so let's have a look at what we get oh i see what's happening now i've missed the semicolon here that's why Okay, save this and go back to the browser. And as you can see, we're getting this line, which is looking cool. It's similar to the design. Obviously we can mess around with the color a little bit more. Maybe it needs to be less. I don't know, we'll have a look later. And when we look at the design, I have the feeling that we're gonna be using this for a few more sections like here and here. So we might as well create this color as a variable so we can reuse and change it later if we don't like it. So to do this at the top, actually let's copy, let's copy this. And to do this, I'm going to go at the top, on top of the body. And inside here, I'm gonna do, let's say, I don't know, I know this is very generic, but I'm gonna go with border color. Just like this, and paste the RGB value. So now I can use this variable in here instead, just like this, border color, and just copy it two more times, like this. And hopefully, obviously I need to put the semicolons in here like this, save it, and this should work as expected. Now this is getting there. I think this is fairly similar to the one here. Uh, this looks, when we zoom out, this looks a little bit better, I think. Um, I wonder whether the color needs to be changed or it needs to be made slightly bigger. But these are small changes that we can make later. So for the header, let's focus on the rest of the stuff. First of all, instead of adding all the elements, so I'm gonna do everything one by one, all the elements, because it's just gonna be easier to, to work with and it will be less confusing. So first of all, let's focus on adding the logo. To add the logo, we can go to the HTML and inside the header, let's make some space so we can just focus on the header. And for the logo, I'm gonna do a div with the class name of header, underscore, underscore logo, just like this. And inside here, we're gonna add an image source, and the image source will be img slash uh, 
blizzard.png give it an old text so battle net or something like this close this and also we need to add one of them arrows and to make things easy i'm actually going to include font awesome in this project and to do this let's go back to the browser and google font awesome Google Font Awesome CDN and the link that I'm looking for is the fontawesome.com customizing WordPress snippets. We're obviously not working with WordPress, but this is the URL. And if we go down, I'm just going to use the first CDN that I see. It doesn't matter too much. So I'll have to use this one and hope that it works. I'm going to copy this and paste it underneath the link here. View toggle will wrap so we can see a little bit better save this and let's find an icon for for this here let's go to font awesome and let's search for and let's search for chevron chevron or whatever it's called i'm going to use the chevron down copy the a little html from here and paste it in your project here Save this and let's have a look if we are getting the icon. As you can see, we have the icon here, which is great. Now, the first thing I see in here is that we're gonna have to create some padding around for the header. And let's have a look at how much we need. Actually, first of all, before we add any padding to this, let's make sure that all of the layouts are centered in the middle. And to do this, we can do it with flex very easily. And for the header, which is here, we can do display flex and we can do align items center just like this let's save this and have a look as you can see the blizzard logo is now centered but i would assume that we need to move it slightly down so maybe we can give this header a little bit of padding at the top so let's try padding dash top of 10 pixels like this and I think this works. So let's or make it less. One, two. I don't know. This looks this looks in the middle, so I'm gonna go for padding eight. Just right here. Save this. And for the left and right, maybe we can do so we have 27 on the left, and we probably I'm gonna have 27 on the right i believe oh no we don't which is weird um so we have nearly 12 on the right and 27 on the left oh let's oh that's nearly 30 okay let's make it 30. so let's do that so top we have eight then the right we can have 12 then bottom will have zero and this is pixels by the way and then the left side we can have something like 30 for now let's have a look uh, and obviously i need to change padding top to be just padding now just like this and let's have a look okay this is working fine the little chevron icon needs to be centered but we'll do this in a second and one thing that i forgot on the header is to do the board the bottom actually so let's add this detail as well border bottom one pixel solid and we can use the border color that we created earlier let's have a look this is looking nice uh, maybe i can remove this grid so we don't have to look at it all the time and this is looking nice so far actually i can definitely measure whether the distance between those two elements is equal but let's not waste too much time and continue for the blizzard logo and the little chevron we're gonna have to turn this into blue i believe let's have a look yep we're gonna have to turn this into some sort of a dark blue i believe here and we're gonna have to center align it as well with the logo what we can do with sas because we're inside the header and um, because we named this um, underscore underscore logo as an element we can literally do inside here we can do ampersand underscore underscore logo and style or logo so first of all i want to make sure that the color 
of the icon is set to the blue one and I'm just going to use hex it doesn't matter then then I want to display this as flex flex let's make sure that this is displayed as flex direction row so the icon will be easier to uh, put in the middle just like this and then we can align items to be center let's have a look yeah as you can see the icon is now blue it's next to the blizzard thing and one thing that we can do is just put give a little bit of margin on the logo to push this icon so let's do on the logo here we can do margin right something like 10 pixels will do save this and have a look that didn't seem to work um oh okay i'm doing i'm actually doing the margin on the actual div instead of the image so we're gonna have to unfortunately we're gonna have to add image in here so another one we're going deep so image margin right 10 pixels and as you can see now this is pushed to the right and i think this would be okay if we exact the space is around seven pixels so i could be very precise and do seven like this so let's now focus on the second bit of this and this will be the navigation bar so for the navigation bar we have games social shop news and the three dots let's have a look at how we can build this inside or index.html and inside the header we're going to create another element and this element is going to be called let's say class name of header as this is an element of the header and underscore underscore nav maybe and this will be a div nav and inside here we can just create an unordered list with a few list elements and a few links just like this obviously let's keep the links like this let's make sure that this is called games then let's just duplicate this a few more times and on Visual Studio Code as you might know you can do Alt Shift and Down and we need one more so the second one was social the third one was shop then we had news and then we had the middle dots which we can do which we can do with the amp the ampersand and then mid dot like this copy this as we need three of them make some space just like this and save so let's go back and have a look obviously we can't see it because the colors are the default and we can change this now in a second if you wanted to change the the colors globally we can obviously go uh, to the css and add a in here which is anchor color set to white maybe just like this and then remove the text decoration to none if you wanted to okay this is looking a little bit better but obviously we need to style it so it's next to the logo and it's looking the same as this so first of all because i am using arial i can kind of guess the font size and normally i would use obviously m's or m's but for now let's just keep it simple and i'm just going to use pixels and let's have a look so I know that the font isn't the same, so it might be the regular one. Is this changed to the regular? No, it's still narrow. So let's change it to regular. Okay, this is actually very similar. And let's change it down to the font that we need. Actually, this might be Arial. I might be right. And we can change this to roughly, I would say roughly 20. And obviously, there is a little bit of a line that we can... Uh, space that we can move around and so on just like this and this will this is almost perfect actually so this so this is gonna be 20 pixels and we can do the space between the letters uh, if you wanted to let's go back and now we can do the same thing as the logo but we can do it for the nav which we could underscore underscore nav so let's do that. Underscore underscore nav. 
Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is set the font size to be 20, I believe I said. Then the color, I know the color is white. Actually, we don't need to set the color anymore because we made the global links color white. Then let's transform all of the letters to uppercase just in case. So we can do transform uppercase. Actually, is text transform instead, just like this. And because the header is displayed as flex, we can make sure that this nav is going to the left side next to the logo with justify self. And the justify self will be start. And this will be actually helpful in a second when we create the other element. So let's have a look at what we get so far. Okay. Everything is looking good. This is obviously an unordered list. So we need to remove the bullet points. We need to make some space between them and we need to add the glowing effect as well. So let's have a look at how we can do that. Go back inside the nav. I'm not gonna, I know that we're gonna be going deep here with the URL and the list and maybe links. Usually uh, you'd probably wanna give your uh, links class names and so on but I'm just gonna be lazy now and do it all, all inside here just like this with a URL and let's reset the margins and paddings first of all then let's now display the, the list as inline block and this is basically going to make the list play next to each other. So every item will display next to each other. Inline block, obviously we can use flexbox for this. And then inside the list, let's style the A, which is the link. And for the A's, let's have a look. First of all, we'll probably need to add some, some padding between them. So let's have a look quickly. Let's zoom out. Let's have a look at how much padding do we have. So we roughly have padding of 30. So we could do 15 on left and right. Let's do that. So zero top and bottom and 15 left and right. Just like this, save it. And as you can see, we're getting all this space. I'm not exactly sure whether this space is equal as well to, yeah, it's roughly 30. So yeah, it's roughly the space is exactly the same. So we can actually leave it. And the next thing that we need to do is add this glowing effect. To do this, we can do text shadow. So on the actual link, we can do text shadow. And what I like to do is I usually like to set up something like zero pixels, zero pixels, and then let's put it zero pixels for now. And let's set the color to RGBA. And obviously we want to set this to be to white. So this is 255, 255, 255. And then we can set it as one. So we didn't have to do RGBA. We could have just done RGB. Uh, save this. And I know that this is not going to make any difference now if I refresh, but what I wanted to do is let's inspect one of them links and actually let's zoom in a little bit. It might break, but it's fine. So inspect this, go to the text shadow. And what I like doing is I like messing around with the numbers in here because it's a little bit more visual. So I can just go up and as you can see, this is doing already the text shadow that we need, but because we zoomed in so much, I don't know how much we should actually add. So let me zoom out, not of this, let me zoom out of the browser to 100% and kind of try to guess it. So, I don't know, this, this looks reasonable to me, 12. Okay, so let's set it to 12. Uh, but one thing that I notice is on the original design, only the first one is glowing because this is the active. Basically, we are on the games um, tab, I guess. And because we're on the games tab, this is the only active element and that's why it's glowing. So maybe they will glow on hover and when they're active. Let's see at how we can do this. So we're going to have to remove this, cut this. 
and do inside here we can do hover just like this and then we can paste the text decoration save it and also let's do a link class sorry let's do a link with the class of active and let's make sure that every single link with the class of active has the same text shadow so for example in this case if i go back to the index the active one would be maybe games and we could do class active just like this save it go back and as you can see the games is active and one thing that bothers me it looks like the spacing between those two elements is not the same so let's have a look we could take a screenshot and paste it in here and just like have a look like this put the opacity down and have a look and yes we could i think this icon is far too big and that's why uh, but we could push this a little bit to the right maybe like a few pixels if you want it to be exact so let's go and do that on the actual logo we can just say margin right seven pixels or whatever that looks a little bit better i believe uh, maybe we can do even more let's put a stand save this and let's have a look at what else do we need to do so on hover we're getting this that effect which is awesome let's have a look at the design now we can look around and actually we are pretty much done with this section now let's and now let's focus on this section on the right side i'm not exactly sure what to call this let's call it tools maybe and we're gonna have an image so we're gonna have an image with this online or offline uh, indicator then we're gonna have the username with a little arrow the bell the users icon and a number let's have a look let's jump back to index.html just next to the header nav we're going to create another one and let's call this one maybe header underscore underscore tools just like this and inside here let's create the avatar div um this is getting a little bit deeper so maybe we can do another div in here with the class of header tools underscore underscore tools dash and then dash avatar we'll see how this works and then inside here we obviously gonna want to we obviously want to add or avatar image and for this i've prepared my logo so image source and then this will be images and then avatar then for the old text i can just put my username Right the brand and we are done with the image maybe we can put this maybe we can put this on one line so it doesn't take too much space just like this save it now let's create the next section which was this username with the chevron icon which we can actually copy uh, from above here oh, let's copy this let's first of all create another div with the header underscore underscore username no sorry underscore underscore tools dash username and and then inside here is where we're going to be adding the username and the chevron icon like this then let's create the next bit which was the bell icon so for this we can do another header tools class just like this and then we'll do notifications and then we'll insert the bell icon in here in a second we'll have to search for one and then also let's copy this and just change this to users just like this so let's find the notification bell icon and use this the one that i'm going to use is this this one here copy the html paste it in here then let's go back and 
you look for users. And for users, we could get away with this one here. So let's copy the HTML and go back. All right, as you can see, this is a little bit messy now. It needs styling. And also we need to move this section to the right side of the screen. Let's do that first of all. So go back to main and we are going to be, let's make a little bit of space. And this is usually back practice going so deep in the tree. Uh, it's usually a lot more to process and that's why you usually give your links a specific class name and you style the links kind of like outside. But for this, because we're doing a small project, I don't think it's going to make any difference whatsoever. But I just wanted to mention it anyway. And let's have a look at the next class. So we created header underscore tools. So let's grab this and do ampersand tools. And inside here, we need to first of all push this section uh, to the, the right side of the screen. And hopefully we'll be able to do this by, put, by doing margin left auto. Save this. And as you can see, this has worked, uh, which is great. And now we can focus on the details. So this section is actually going to be a little bit tricky. First of all, let's measure the height of this section, I would say. This would be, without the border, would be roughly 30 pixels. So let's add this. Height will be 30 pixels. I believe that we need border top, bottom and right. And we'll probably leave the left one, or actually we can add, let's add border everywhere. So border, one pixel, solid, and we can use a variable name, border color, save it. Then let's have a look at what we get. Uh, we can't really see because of the image, I think. And for the image, we could quickly style it in here. It was under, and percent underscore underscore avatar. And this would be, let's have a look, roughly, so this would be 40 pixels height and width. So width will be set to 40, height will be set to 40, and we need to do border radius of 50% and overflow hidden to hide the overflow stuff. So if you refresh, nothing is happening and I wonder why. So let's go back. And this is because we actually have tools dash avatar this time. So it will be just dash avatar. I don't know if this is a good idea, but we can just do dash avatar. Or potentially, or technically we could do two underscores, but no, I think this is fine. Because it's not a modifier, it's one dash. And if it was a modifier, we'll put usually two dashes. So let's ignore this. Let's go back. And as you can see, we're getting the circle now, which is great. But the image isn't actually fitting in here. And I wonder whether I need to like make all the images on this layout responsive. Maybe we can do this at the top image. We can do width or maybe max width to be 100% and height to be auto. Let's have a look at how this works. Oh yeah, this actually worked, which is great. And we can now focus on the rest of the stuff. Let's go back, scroll down. Now, first of all, as you can notice, the all the colors in here are black and we need to change them to this kind of white color but it's not so white we can use the rgb if we want to be exact so let me make a note of this 174 179 173 uh yeah we can do this or we could set we could set as white and put the opacity down whatever is easier so let's go in here and set color and i would to be honest i would normally do rgba and just change the RGBA to something like, I don't know, six, like this. But if it doesn't work, then we'll change it. Let's have a look. Okay, I think this is okay. It looks very similar. First of all, let's center all of the elements in the middle. And to do this, we can do align item center. Just 
like this. Have a look. Obviously, it's not making any difference at the moment. Maybe we actually need to, sorry, we actually need to display this as flex. So first of all, let's do that. Display flex. Then we can align the items to the center and let's have a look. And as you can see, uh, everything is now aligned in a row, which is good. And we can start with the image. First of all, we can look at moving the image and to do this, we can use the transform tool. So for the avatar, we can literally do transform, translate X, which is the left and right axis. And this will be around minus eight pixels, I would assume. Save this, go back. And this is covering the border color, which I'm happy with. And now we can concentrate on the username, which has a little bit of space around. So maybe we can add a padding between, seems to be 10 pixels padding. So let's do that. So for the username, we have username here and we can copy the same thing like this username. Let's do padding top and bottom will be zero and left and right will be uh, around eight. Did I say? I think I said around eight. And as, as you can see, this is giving it quite a lot of space. Maybe we don't need so much here, but for the right side, it's fine. In fact, let's change it a little bit. Let's do top zero, right, let's do 10 pixels. So this is right, bottom zero and right zero. Let's have a look. This looks a little bit better. Now I think, if we go back, uh, the only thing I would change is maybe the icon color. And to do this, I can get this color from Photoshop and just under username, we can do I and then do color and set the color to the one that we just copied like this. Save it. Look back. As you can see, this is cool. Uh, the icon itself could be a little bit smaller, I guess, but it's fine. Then for the notification here, we'll need to let me see if I can zoom in a little bit so you can see a little bit better. Okay, I think this is actually working. So for the, you see what happens when you don't use SVGs as well. I've used PNG instead of SVG, which is fine. I couldn't find the Blizzard logo with SVG. I'm sure there is one out there, but let's focus on this now. For the notification, we need to add another border on the left side. So let's do this. So we have username and let's find out notifications like this. We can do notifications and we can do border left, one pixel solid, and then we can use the border color, save it like this. And we're having a little bit of a problem here. Maybe we can add a little bit of padding to the actual icon, sorry, to the actual div. So let's do padding and let's make it work somehow. So let's say five pixels, maybe six pixels. Okay, six pixels seems to work here. And then let's do another 10 pixels to the right. Okay, I think this worked. I think I have zoomed in quite a lot, so that's why it's breaking as well. Let's do that. Uh, you didn't copy, copy, paste, save. Okay, let's zoom out ever so slightly. Okay, this seems to be working. So I can actually do the same thing for the users. Let's do that. So inside here, we can do and user or users, I can't remember. We have users. Then we can do the border left. Let's copy it from here so we don't waste time. And let's try to copy this button, which could potentially work. Okay, this is actually, this has worked real really well. Obviously we could make this icon smaller, as I said earlier, and we could add the number, but let's ignore it for now. It's no, it's no need for it, I guess. Let's zoom out a little bit now and have a look. One thing that we're missing from here is the icons at the top, but these are actually, these are actually only useful on the Windows application. So I'm not going to create them, but you could technically position them maybe as absolute, and yeah, another thing that I noticed is that on the header, we have this border as well, which we can add. So we could go back to the header and add border top. 
one pixel solid and then border color but I don't know if this will be visible as you can see it's hardly visible in the browser maybe it will be in other browsers so let's leave it as you can see your head is actually pretty much done now let's do a quick last inspection here I am pretty happy with the result so far but one thing that I forgot is actually this the online status icon let's have a look at how we can do that so for the online status it's going to be tricky to add it to the image so let's add it to the to the username but we will but we've already got an icon here let's add it let's add it as a span maybe and we'll see how it goes so we can target this span now inside the username uh, which is down here we can do another one span and i would like to position the span as absolute but in this case we have to do position on the username as relative and now position as absolute so it's inside this container then we're obviously gonna have to give this span a color which will be this color let's copy it so let's say background color like this then unfortunately we're gonna have to fake this border a little bit so I'm just gonna copy this color from here like this and fake it a little bit so we can do border uh, two pixels solid and then the color and of course we want to make this to be a circle so I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to do border radius and it this will be 50% again let's save and because this is a span we're gonna have to give it a width and a height otherwise it's just gonna not gonna be displayed and let's do that let's say width and the width of this will be 17 and the thing is 10 okay i think 10 would do so let's say width 10 sorry 10 pixels and let's set the height to 10 pixels because it's a circle let's save this and let's see what happens okay we're actually getting the little dot but we just need to position it somewhere and to do this i'm gonna do it with the inspector here so we have position absolute we just need to move it to the left zero maybe minus 20 looks good and bottom we can do zero but it's gonna be minus uh something like this let's have a look at the design uh yes yeah, something like this seem to be working well i think this would do and then move this to the right actually i'm quite happy with this 18 and 13. so let's copy those let's copy those values and paste them in here all right i'm fairly happy with this now let's save this and we should be done with the top section now let's now focus on the sidebar the sidebar itself should be fairly easy and straightforward to do let's remove this and actually we can use this to measure the rest of the text i believe that this is going to be around uh, 14 maybe yeah this is around 14 And obviously we need to change the text color and so on and this would be uh, this would be the same but the color is gonna be just white so for the sidebar I'm not exactly sure whether this has a blur effect as well but it's definitely slightly darker maybe we could add a little bit of blur or we can just make the container itself darker we can try both I guess let's try with blur but for, yeah first of all let's before we do any styles first of all let's make sure that we add all the items and the icons which should take a few minutes to do so let's go back to the index and inside the aside the sidebar in here we're gonna add the menu to do this nicely i'm going to wrap the titles in a span of course you can wrap them in h1 h2 whatever is good for you but because this is just a demo application i think span will do so let's say the first one was blizzard and let's now create a ul for the lists and inside here obviously you're gonna have to create the lists so technically we should wrap them in links and let's do that href 
and let's keep those links empty and inside the link we are obviously going to have a little icon just like this and then the title of the game so the first one was warcraft so let's add an image and the image i need to add is called is under images and then warcraft.png let's set the all to something like world of world of warcraft and let's set the title to world of warcraft as well so i can just copy this in inside here save this and this will be our first link let's have a look as you can see the icon is fairly large and we need to style all this but before we style anything let's add the rest of the stuff and i'll probably uh, speed this section up because it's literally just adding the images and the names which should take a while
All right, I'm actually done with this section. Let's refresh. And as you can see, we have a lot of icons and so on, which we'll, which we'll have to style in a second. But first of all, uh, one thing that I forgot to do is add class names for the URL. And to do this, let's do sidebar underscore underscore menu. And I'm going to do the same for the second one in here. And I also I missed to add the title for this one. And the title for this one is called Partner Games. Just like this. Save it and let's start styling this. The main class name of the aside is sidebar and then we have menu. This should be easy. Okay, in, in the sidebar. So for the darkened background, we could either do blur or we can just darken it just like on the picture here. I think it's just darkened. So let's do background color and we can just do let's set any rgb color and see whether we can change ever so slightly so i'm going to do something darker like this but then change the opacity to be slightly low and let's have a look at how this works okay this isn't too bad from a first try it's this one is a little bit more green i would say so maybe we should just copy this which is 47 55 44 47, 55, and 44, and maybe we can just put this at six. And I think this is slightly closer now. So let's leave it. The next thing, let's do the border to the right. One pixel solid, and then border color. Save this, let's have a look. That seems to work let's just add a little bit of padding from the top which will be roughly 30 pixels so top will be 30 pixels and maybe we can set top and bottom to be 30 pixels and left and right we'll need to set to zero save this this seems to be uh, moving then we can style the actual uh, title of this and we need to move this from the left with roughly 20 pixels by the looks of it so let's do span padding and then actually let's just do padding left and this will be 20 pixels we need to display the span as a block just in case so it so it's on its own on its so it's on one line maybe we need to add a little bit of margin to the bottom so it will be roughly maybe less than that 14 or 13 pixels so let's do margin bottom 14 pixels save and uh, this pushes it down obviously um, most of the colors inside here will be white so let's set the whole sidebar to have a color of white just like this but for the links we'll reset it manually and now we can actually focus on the menu first of all let's create the menu css element and then scale down the images because they're too big and it's kind of annoying so inside here we can do and underscore underscore menu and then inside here let's target the images for the images we can do let's have a look uh, roughly 28 pixels so let's say max width to be set to 28 pixels uh, we'll probably add some padding and so on but for now as you can see they're ever, they're so, so much smaller now we obviously need to reset the list style and so on so let's do that actually so inside menu we can do first of all let's do display flex so we can align the elements in the middle and make them as columns so let's do display flex then we can do flex direction as columns then we can vertical align the elements to the middle like this save this let's have a look and we might actually have to do the vertical align middle to the actual image let's have a look if I paste it in here okay this has worked now to the image when I added it 
So I don't, I'm not exactly sure whether we need it here, but we probably do. No, we don't. Okay, so we don't need the vertical line in here. We just need it on the image. And because this is a UL, we obviously want to reset any padding and margin. Padding zero. Then we need to set the list style to none to remove the bullet points. And, and we'll probably need to add some margin now. So let's have a look. Uh, yep. So the margin will be like this, around 15 pixels margin, I would say, maybe more. Let's add 15. Let's go and refresh. Uh, they still seem very close to each other. Maybe we can do, uh, maybe when we space them out, we'll see. I don't know. Yeah, they seem, they still seem uh, to be very close to each other. Uh, and I'm not sure why. So I actually, oh, I actually put it the margin on the year, which it was, which was stupid. That should be going to the list itself. So we can do a uh, list and we can do margin bottom 15. And that will space them out for because the these are links let's move the links from the left and we can do this inside the uh, list in here so we can do padding left of let's have a look I think it was 20 pixels uh, yeah around 20 20 pixels will do and then we need to add some padding around each element itself i believe because they're quite small so far so maybe we can do padding of six pixels or five four pixels and then zero ah so i want the padding top and bottom to be a little bit bigger but then i want the left to be around 20 pixels like this, but I don't want the right. So we can do top, bottom, then, sorry, top, right, bottom, and then left. I think this should do the job. So let's copy this and add pad in here, just like this. Save this. And here's of the storm seems to have a broken image. Let's fix this quickly. Heroes, PNG, save it. Okay. And now maybe we can do the images a little bit of padding to push the text itself because the text is not wrapped in anything. So if we target the image, we can do padding and then we can set top and bottom to be zero, right to be maybe 10 pixels, bottom to be zero, and then left to be zero. And I think this would work quite nicely. Let's go and change the list and actually images here. Let's do that, save it. Let's have a look at what else do we need to do. On the design, the colors for the text is a little bit darker. So we could do it with RGBA or we simply could copy this like that and give the link, excuse me, give this link a color. Save it, have a look. We can change the pointer to be cursor context dash menu, context dash menu, like this. So the cursor won't change, shouldn't change. Or maybe we can just do this for the link like this. And now the cursor won't change, but obviously we need to add the hover effect, which we can have a look on the BattleNet app. The colors changes ever so slightly. So let's take a screenshot of this, paste it in here and let's have a look. Uh, the color just goes slightly whiter, I guess. So we could go back, add a hover on the image inside here, just like this, hover. And then we can do background color. And the background color we can set to RGBA. And then that would be, excuse me, that would be 255, 255, 255. And let's set it to something like 1.2 or 1.1. Let's have a look. Go back to the browser. 
and as you can see we're having a little bit of a problem here this is because i think we need to display the images maybe as block or make them full width so let's have a look so width 100 percent doesn't fix it but display block fixes it but also the padding didn't seem to be working well earlier so this actually fixed some of the padding and it looks so much nicer now maybe the padding is a little bit too much now but we'll have a look so for the links let's do display block and sort out some of the padding and this padding might be because we don't have box sizing so let's put box sizing as border box and now the padding should be added to the width and height of the container. Okay, actually, I'm fairly happy with this. The spacing between the elements could be less, I guess. Let's have a look in the original. So on the list, I think I have margin bottom quite a lot. Maybe we can have it as 10. I think this seems a little bit closer to the original. I could, of course, I could have measured this, but let's leave it now. At the bottom of the list, we're actually going to have to push the second list. Let me actually put this on the right side so we can see a little bit better. That's much better. And uh, So to push the UL, we can do margin bottom. Uh, the margin will be roughly around, let's say, 30 pixels, 35 pixels. And let's say 36 pixels. Margin bottom, 36 pixels, just like this. This is looking good. The links are looking good, everything is looking good. Technically speaking, we could consider the menu as done. We could add this icon to the bottom, but I don't know if we're going to find one. So let's have a look. Arrow. I'm not able to find the same arrow. For the arrow, we can just use maybe this one. I know it's not the same. Let's copy it, go back to the HTML and under here we can actually add our icon and we could just target this as actually let's give it a class name of sidebar underscore underscore icon and we use the icon to position it as absolute but we need to make sure that the sidebar is positioned positioned uh, relative so let's do position relative like this and then maybe at the bottom here after the menu we can add the icon with the ampersand underscore underscore icon and then we can do position absolute bottom I don't know how much how many pixels we need from the bottom so the left will be roughly 20 20 and then the bottom will be roughly 27 so let's do that bottom 27 pixels left 10 uh, 20 sorry save this and technically speaking we'll see the arrow in here it is a little bit too bright so maybe we could copy the color of here and be precise and change it to color this refresh and as you can see we're getting the arrow obviously this arrow can be linked and so on but we're not going to be actually doing any javascript in here just we're just focusing on the CSS. Also another thing that I noticed is that as you can see everything is looking quite responsive as well which is great and and now the last section that we need to focus is the main section. One thing that I just noticed as I was looking at the details is that the font here is actually a lot smaller than the one I've chosen and this is because I actually forgot to reset the font. So this font is if I remember 14 pixels so let's change the font for the menu to be font size 14 pixels and that should look a lot better now. As you can see this looks so much better now. Again the spacing between the elements can be put down a little bit now. I should have measured it in the first place. So this could be... I don't know, this looks a lot more natural. Uh, let's have a look. Height 14. I'm not convinced that this is 14. Uh, I think this is fine. So this is around margin bottom two now. Sorry, margin bottom two on this list. Or in fact, we can just remove it. Okay, this I'm not convinced again. Maybe we can add this, and I'm just gonna add four. Okay, this seems a lot better now with the font smaller, and this one needs to be smaller as well. So I'm gonna have to go. In fact, I can do the font globally. So instead of 
giving it to the menu only i'll just do it globally globally for everything just like this let's tidy up save and now everything is looking much closer to the original design let's close this and focus on the next bit inside here we have the logo we have a menu which we'll have to recreate we have those cards which we can recreate but for the top ones what I'm thinking is I'm actually just going to create them with background color, sorry, background images. And for the bottom ones, I will recreate them exactly the same as they are in here. And then we'll create the button and so on. So let's get going by creating this section. So first of all, let's measure the padding, which is going to be roughly 50 pixels, let's say. And then from the top, we'll probably need, let's have a look. If I remember 30 pixels 50 and 30 pixels so this is the main section let's go down and inside here and for some reason I have content and this is actually wrong this sorry this is actually wrong so we need to put this as main let's have a look at the layout everything is working because we actually positioned the header and the sidebar correctly so the only thing that was left was the main content and that's why everything was working so this is good so padding on the left side will be 50 so at the top we have 28 on the right side we have zero on the bottom we'll have zero and on the left we'll have 50 pixels of padding just like this and okay the padding isn't working because i missed pixels save this go back and as you can see, the content is now pushed and we can start by adding some of the elements now. So first of all, let's create this element here, which will be kind of like the title of the game, I guess. And then we have some options. Let's start by building this. Let's go back and insert here. We can create a div with the class name of main, underscore, underscore title. Uh, inside the title, I'm actually going to add the image here. So IMG source and the source for this is for me img modern warfare uh, title.png and then i can just put old modern warfare just like this and then let's do the options which were just below and for this i can do another div with the class name of main underscore underscore title and then i will do dash options like this and inside here we're gonna have the three options that we have here option redeem code and shop call of duty and we're also gonna have to find those icons so let's get started with the first one and i'm just gonna get wrap them inside links so href uh, this is gonna be an empty link the first one was options let's copy this the second one was redeem a code And the last one was shop call of duty just like this and now let's find uh, the the icons for them let's go back to font awesome and let's search for cog the one that I like is this one copy the HTML paste it in here for the redeemer code we can do something like a tick box so maybe check and I think this should do the job it's not exactly the same let's put it in here and for shop we can just put a card maybe this one will do the job copy the card paste it in here and we should be good to go so let's go back to a website and have a look we're getting all the icons they're all nicely spaced out in here obviously we'll do the rest before we add any more elements let's style those two first to do this i'm actually going to create three main rows so basically what i want to achieve now is section those elements into three so this will be one row this will be another row and this will be another row so first of all let's measure how big this row will be from here to roughly here without the margin at the bottom so that will be roughly 150 pixels then we can set this as one fraction of the screen whatever is left for the next bit we'll probably set it to 130 so let's go back and try to remember those numbers let's display this as a grid to start with 
like this. Then we can do grid template rows. And as I said, the first section will be 150 pixels. Then we want the second section to take as much space there is available on the screen. And then the, second sec the last section will be roughly around 130 pixels, like this. Save this, go back to the browser and have a look. Uh, of course, if I enable the grid in here, you will see the sections, one, two, three. The first thing I notice is that the font is far too big again. So we can set the font size. To 14 and we could have done this globally to be honest but uh, it's kind of too late now and then let's make sure that this image is displayed as block and we add some margin at, at the bottom maybe roughly around 20 30 pixels 35 pixels looks good so let's do that ampersand underscore underscore title dash image and then inside here we can display it as block maybe and then we can do margin bottom to be, I can't remember what I said, around 30 pixels. Save this, and uh, this hasn't worked. Let's have a look why. Uh, this is because it would be nice to add a class name to this image, so let's do that. So we can do class equals main underscore title. I was thinking I actually added the class name. And then we can do dash image, just like this. And now we have it in here. We can save, go back, and as you can see, this has pushed our little menu below. So we're actually done with this image. Uh, it's fine. Obviously, if you have a big image, you might want to restrict the size of it and so on. But let's focus on this menu now. This menu has on the text, it has a text shadow. Also, the cogs are blue, uh, but they have a little bit of gradient, which we can replicate as well. So let's have a look at how we can do this. First of all, let me actually copy this color just so we have it. And inside here, we can do and underscore underscore title options. We need to set the background color to the one that I just copied now. Obviously, we could do it as RGB as well. And I think that would be probably the best option. Let's have a look. Yes, uh, I think RGB would be the best option. We need to go back and find out the RGB color. So this would be 70, 82, 68. RGBA. 70, 32, 58, I believe. And uh, let's paste them out. And then for the opacity, I'm just gonna do six. Hopefully this would work. Oh, this looks totally different. So maybe I've 70, 82, 68. 70, 82, 68. I totally messed this one up. So, okay, this looks a lot better now. As you can see, this diff element is actually set as a block. So we need to actually change this to an inline, ele inline element so it doesn't go full width. Let's do that. So we can do display, inline block, just like this save go back and this restricts it now obviously we're gonna have to add a little bit of padding and i'm just gonna eyeball this it looks like around 10 pixels to speed up the process so padding 10 pixels and also one thing that i notice is that i'm not sure whether there is a border radius or not uh, but i'm not too sure uh, my screens are quite bad so i don't know maybe there is more border radius and let's just set it to two pixels or something like this and let's have a look. Okay, this seems okay. For the links, let's just add a little bit of padding between them, but not the last child because it's gonna push the container too much. So let's do that. And we could have added a little bit more padding on the left side and on the right side. So we could do 10% top and bottom and maybe 14% left and right. And then let's add the padding to the links. So A, but not last child. Padding uh, right will be 10 pixels like this and save. So as you can see, this is, they're spaced out nicely and there is no padding on the right side because I use that not element, which is awesome. Now let's focus on the text shadow, which we need to recreate. To do this, I usually use the same thing as I showed you earlier. So let's do text dash shadow and the text shadow we can set to zero, Pix zero pixels zero pixels, zero pixels, and then we can do RGB, and we can set this to, let's say, black, just 
like this. This is solid black. And now if we go uh, back and inspect the up the anchor links and let's mess around with the numbers a little bit. So I don't know if you can see, but maybe something like this would do. The issue here is that the tech shadow is no longer working on this element, which is a little bit annoying. So let's copy this and fix it. I think this was just two pixels. And I'm gonna have to do another link, which is really annoying now, but that's just the way it is. And let's just remove this spacing that we don't need. Save this. And hopefully, if we go back, all of the text has a little bit of shadow now, which mimics the original. And now we need to do the color for the cocks, but to save time, I'm just gonna do a solid color for this. And let's just copy this. Go back. And these are the eye elements because they're from Font Awesome. So we can just literally do eye and then color. And then we can set the value of the color here, just like this. Go back. And as you can see, we have the icons and everything. They have the shadow. And one thing that I noticed is that options has this chevron icon, but I'm just gonna skip this one. There is no need to add it now. It's very easy. You just, we can just copy this one to be honest and just style it separately if we needed to. And let's focus now on the next bit. Let's create some of the boxes or cards in this case. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, but we ideally we want those five to be at the top and those three to be at the bottom. Uh, let's do that. Let's go back to HTML and we can add them inside here. So let's do another diff with the main underscore underscore. Then we can do cards this time like this. And inside here, we're gonna display every element as a card. So let's do class name of card like this. Because I am gonna be adding background images to in each individual card, I'm gonna do something lazy here and I'm just gonna do cards dash one as a modifier. And then I'm gonna do the same for the rest. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight is what we need, but the last three are gonna be on another row. So just so I know I'm gonna space them out, but obviously let's change the numbers now. Two, three, four, five, and six, seven, eight. And, and for the last ones, they have a little bit of text in here, which I can quickly pause and copy and paste. So don't waste your time. All right, so I've added I've added a diff inside each card, well, the last three cards, where we'll be doing this background color. And inside the diff, I'll just put H4 for the title and a paragraph for the text. Uh, so that's everything we need to know. And obviously, normally you'd probably have text in those cards as well, but it's not a good thing to have empty diffs like this. So normally, usually you'd have some videos or images and so on, but to make it easier, I'm just going to keep it like this. And now let's have a look at how we can make them work. And first of all, let's go to the browser and see how they look. So that's how they look at the moment. Let's close down and let's use a little bit of grid to style them. Below here, we can do and cards. And for the cards, let's first of all, add this margin at the top a little bit. That's like, I don't know, five or six pixels. Six pixels. Then let's display this as a grid. And this is going to be a tricky one. So we can do grid template uh, columns. And this time I'm going to use the repeated. And then I'm going to say autofill. And now we need to measure how big those cards are. So for example, this card is going to be roughly 230 pixels. So I want to make sure that every card is at least 350 pixels. And obviously we could use mean and max, but I'm just going to keep them the, I'm just going to keep them solid size. And for the rows, I want to do grid template rows, and then I can do one for, for each row, which we have two rows, well, we want to display two rows, one fraction each. I know this is gonna be ever so slightly different than the original because technically speaking, on the browser, we have a little bit more basis taken from the top of the browser, this bit here the URL and the tab. So this takes quite a lot of space. 
So we have to have this in mind as well. So the boxes are not going to be exactly the same size, but yeah, but we'll go from here. As you can see, some of those boxes are already taken place, but obviously we need to give them background colors and so on. So let's have a look. First of all, let's add a little bit of gap between them, just like in here. And this gap will be roughly uh, 20 pixels. So let's do gap 20 pixels. That should push everything to the side, but we won't be able to see it right now. And then let's start styling the cards inside here. So we can do, let's have a look. We can do card. Um, maybe we could have done cards and then dash card, but oh well, let's just go with it. So card, and then for each individual card, I want to make sure that the text inside is set to color white, I believe. So the main color of the cards will be white, but then inside we're going to have another one which will be uh, slightly gray for if we zoom in, if we zoom in, you'll see that those cards have like an outline of black outline and then they have this really nice uh, line inside it, which makes the card so much nicer. So to do this, we can actually do outline and for this we can do one pixel solid and the outline was black. So let's do black like this three zeros and for the border we can do uh, one pixel solid and we can potentially do the border color that we had created at the top let's have a look if it looks good i don't know if you can see but we clearly have the black border and the white border which is awesome it already creates the cards they're already looking pretty good to be honest and maybe we just need a little bit of spacing at the top as well so this was the margin let's say 10 okay maybe a little bit more now the difficult bit in here is that we want the first card to be bigger than the rest so i want this card to take double the, si the size of those cards to do this we can simply target the first card which is card number one okay we actually missed a column here uh, but we're not yet done with the cards they are looking cool now but also let's make sure that we add the shadow that it's in design so i'm going to try to guess it uh, super quickly box shadow and the box shadow we can set to zero pixels zero pixels zero pixels zero pixels and then we can do rgba rgba and i want to make sure that this is like a black color so we can do 0 0.0.0, .0 and then let's do something like and let's just do seven. All right, save this. Obviously there won't be any shadow now, but if you inspect it, I'm gonna use my method, which I always use to create the shadow. And you just mess around with the point in here. And as you can see, it's already creating this nice shadow. It's kind of hard to tell which one it is. Maybe let's just go with this. 0, 2 pixels, 10 pixels, 0 pixels. It doesn't have to be exact. Just like this. Save it and just like this we have the shadows done. It might be a good practice to just put a background color maybe. So let's do that. Uh, for the background color let's use this one instead. Just like this. Actually it might be a good idea to put background color but let's just ignore it because we'll be putting images anyway. And now let's focus on fixing the first card. Basically the first card needs to take a little bit more space than the rest. And what I can use is I can tell the first card to, tell, to take double the space as the other ones. So let me show you. We can go here and if you remember I added those modifiers of card one, two, three, four, five. So I can target card one inside here just like this card dash one and then I can do and then I can do grid column and I can say span between two spaces so let's have a look that didn't work uh, and this is because we have card with two dashes in here so let's save it go back and as you can see this card is now spanning between two spaces and then we have the layout and now the layout is very similar to the original. Let's just add some content now just to make it slightly better. And this spacing needs to be fixed as well again. For the first card, let's add a background image. 
uh, this image will be a row and then dot dot slash images and uh, this will be called card one and then I can set the background color sorry background size to be cover and that's it let's have a look as you can see this is looking pretty cool then let's do the rest i think the image is kind of like colliding white with white and that's why it's happening but obviously if you put the correct image it work fairly nicely so let's do the rest of the images super quickly exactly the same way and i'm just going to copy this paste it here just like this this paste it in here and i'm just going to duplicate this a couple of times and just change the numbers quickly so we have I think eight cards so let's put two one two so we have one two three four five six seven eight and then we can do three four five six seven eight and then we can do the same here three four five six seven eight and I don't know what's happening now. Oh, I've put three here. So I need that to two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight. Save this. And these are looking nice, but I probably didn't save enough images, I assume. So let's maybe like, I don't know, uh, let's reuse this one in here. So this is image two, okay. And that would do and we'll definitely need a little bit more space for the buttons and the images could be set to cover as well so they cover absolutely everything they don't they don't look like this but for now let's focus on creating the bottom cards just like here so we need this background color first of all copy let's go back we can literally style it maybe just outside here and if you remember we created the div and for this div, we're gonna have to position this div inside the card as uh, absolute, position absolute. So we need to make sure that the card is actually positioned as relative. So let's add position relative, save it, go back. Then let's make sure that this div starts from the bottom of zero, starts from the left of zero right zero but the top we need to make sure that it's like i don't know what this is a little bit more than around just above 50 percent i would say so let's say top needs to be around 40 percent or whatever let's let's try it out and don't forget to add the background color so background color the one that we just copied just like this save and as you can see this is uh, working but we are getting uh, white on white border here and because our border has a lot of uh, is opaque then the white is actually appearing quite badly so what i'm gonna have to do is copy the actual color from here and add it as a solid color so on cards we're gonna have to do border and instead of the border color we'll just add it as a solid color like this and hopefully that should solve our problem Yes, as you can see, the cards look a lot sharper now, actually. But I must have broken something because um, there is a lot of space. Maybe I added this space earlier. And because of the relative stuff. Okay, I definitely messed up here. Is because the div, I'm actually starting outside all the cards. And this div is actually needs to be inside the card, which was a uh, dumb thing to do. So uh, we need to change this background color to the solid one from here. like this okay this is working and the reason this is not working is because I went backwards and I need to add background color of this so let's add this background color here background color and set it as this color that we just copied all right as you can see this is getting shaped now the only thing that we left is uh, to do the padding and let's just add padding and this will be roughly let's see on the left side this will be around 14 pixels so let's just add 14 pixels everywhere just like this and as you can see this is working quite well and if you were to change the percentages 
All right, maybe we need to put this as auto. All right, one thing, one thing that I noticed is when I was scaling down the website just now, the uh, boxes after this, obviously now we have three rows and now they're breaking. So we are probably just gonna have to do either not put anything or put auto, I would say. Yeah, let's put auto instead and I think that might fix the issue. Uh, yeah, this looks, this is looking okay. And now we need to fix the titles and the text. For the titles, they're slightly bigger, but I think this text is around 12 pixels and it has the text shadow. So let me copy this. And we can do inside the cards and inside the div, we can do P and we can do color. Set to this color that we just copied. And then we can put the font size to be font size 12 pixels. Then for the actual heading, which was H4, we can reset the margins, so margin zero. And then we can put the font size to be 14 pixels. Just like this. Let's have a look. And this is looking a little bit better, but we can also copy the text shadow from here just to save time. So uh, where was it? Text shadow black. Let's copy this. And I think, I believe the text shadow is on both, yep. So let's add text shadow on the whole div, just like this. And let's scale. And as you can see, the text shadow is working. Maybe it needs to be a little, a little bit more prominent, but that's absolutely fine. Let's close. And we are now struggling with space a little bit, but we've gone so far, so we might as well just create the button. Maybe we can create the button to be quite small and we'll go from there. So let's create those elements. Uh, underneath the cards is where we'll be creating them. And we can call this something like dot main underscore underscore footer. And then inside here, we can maybe section this into two. Maybe we can just do one section here, left, and then we can do another section here to the right and just ignore this for now, uh, just to speed up the, the process. But if you wanna do this as well, it's exactly the same as here, the way we did the logo, a left, the one next to it, and then we just do the margin right to auto, I believe, here. So let's do that super quickly. So let's create the two sections. Let's call the first one left maybe. So this will be main underscore underscore footer. And then this will be dash left. And then let's create another one. And we'll just call this one right. Just like this. For the first one, let's add the content. We might as well as we're here. So we're gonna have a label. For the label, we can do it for uh, version and then and then I believe it said version slash region just like this and then we need to add a select just like this and inside the select actually we we need to give it a name usually for example this will be version and then we need to give it usually an id if we're going to code this properly version and then inside here we need to create two options option one can have a value of europe and then europe can be the text and then option two can be maybe uh, usa usa just like this Okay. save this then we need to add the button as well we can add the button just right here and for this i'm just going to create a normal button and with the class of button and then let's add a modifier to be something like button slash uh, dash dash play and then for the button text we'll just say play like this uh, we should be good to go and for the right side we need to add those logos here which I've literally cut and pasted, but they will do the job. So let's add that. IMG source, and the source for this is IMG slash footer logos, and then let's put a note so it's not empty. Logos, I don't know what this, these are called. These are Activision maybe, just like this. All right, save this, and let's have a look at what we get. So we are very tight on space here. We could technically make this smaller or make this smaller. 
or make this bigger actually. Uh, in fact, we can make this slightly bigger. To do this, let's go back to the CSS. And here, where was the grid? We have the first row to be 150. The second one was is taking all the available space. And the third one, let's just make a little bit bigger. Just like this. I think this will work for now. So let's start this section now. First of all, I'm thinking of displaying this section as flex. And I'm going to do this inside here as well. Just make sure that it's not inside the card actually. So this is, yeah, this is inside the card. So I need to be outside the cards in here. And let's do and underscore underscore footer. And this is the last section that we'll be doing. So this will be display as flex. And then we can do justify content space between. Content space between. Then we can align the items flex end as well. Items flex and just like this. Let's have a look at what we get. As you can see, we have in the left side and the right side, which is great. Obviously, could do with some padding and so on. For the left side, we probably need to restrict the button to be. We probably need some sort of a restriction. So let's say a restriction of 270 pixels. So for the left side, we can do and dash left. And we can do maybe, let's say max, do we do width or max width? Max width to be 276 pixels. Or let's do, let's do just width. All right, let's just do width. And then inside here, we need to do some stuff with the label, which we created. So first of all, for the label, we're gonna have to, let's copy this color here to speed up the process. So let's do, sorry, for the label, which I'm looking here, uh, we need to, let's copy this color here, just to speed things up, or actually we can have it as RGB and just turn it down. So color, RGBA, 255, and turn it down to four maybe. Uh, I think we've got an extra bracket, just like this. Uh, this is looking good. Then this can be displayed as block, so it takes its own line. Block. And then we need to add a little bit of margin. Uh, we don't have to be specific, but we can do 10 pixels. So margin bottom, 10 pixels just like this. And we should be good to go. As you can see, this is now working. Now we need to style the input and the play button. So for the select, we can do a couple of things. So first of all, let's have a look at the select. There is a little bit of border radius. I'm not gonna do the little plan for now, just to save time, but there is a little bit of border radius. We probably need to copy the background color. And this is probably gonna be 12, I assume. Yeah, 12. So let's do font size 12 pixels. Let's do background color to be the one that I just copied. Let's do the border to be one pixel solid to the border that we used everywhere, border color. Let's make sure that the select is 100% width. And last but not least, let's make sure that the color of the text is set to white. And let's add a little bit of padding. I'm just gonna the four and I think this would do the job. Oh, one thing that we forgot is the border radius maybe. And that's probably like two pixels, I'm not too sure. Uh, but it seems to be working okay because I don't want to do everything, I'm just gonna leave as, as it is. And now we need to style the button, we need to make it a little bit bigger. Obviously this needs to be a little bit big as well, but. Let's focus on the button now. For the button, let's have a look. We just have play and we have this gradient color. So we can easily go to CSS gradient IO and just copy the colors in here. So first of all, let's copy the top color and paste it in here. And then let's copy the bottom color roughly and paste it in here. And now we need to turn the degrees so they start from zero, just like this. And let's copy the code output it. And let's copy this to clipboard. And for the button, we can literally do uh, dot button 
no sorry we can yeah we can literally do button button just like in here and do background color but also we need to make the button slightly bigger so let's display it as block let's make sure that the button is maybe maybe make it bigger with font size 22 pixels let's have a look uh, okay this is looking good the text needs to be set to color fff border radius need to be set to two pixels maybe uh, we need to reset the border to zero as well as there is border as default so this is looking nice now but of course we need to make this a lot bigger so 22 is not enough 26 maybe and let's add a lot of padding so padding 12 pixels everywhere like this for some reason it's not going through it maybe i didn't add that let's have a look no so let's do width 100 uh, percent this is looking a little bit better now uh, it is close to the bottom so we could give this section and margin i guess um, it is quite tight because yeah okay it is quite tight because obviously this was full screen on windows and we are building it on browser uh, so for the section we can put a little bit of uh, padding at the bottom so a label oh i already done this but it's not it doesn't seem to be doing oh, okay i need to do it on the section here so let's do that like this and uh, this is looking good and to be honest this obviously needs to be a little bit bigger but then this will push the cards which is probably okay i guess but that concludes everything for this tutorial i hope you like this tutorial i hope you learned something new i would appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel it would help me a lot uh, make sure you give this video the thumbs up comment below if you want to see more videos just like this and as always my name is Raddy, and you're watching my channel Raddy the brand and I'll see you in the next video.